Hello YouTube friends, I'm just popping in before the main feature to tell you about this month's shop update because it isn't a shop update at all, it's the summer sale and so if you pop over to the shop which will be live when this video goes live we've taken 20% off every item in the shop and actually a bit more off some of them and so you could go along to the shop now if you want to and where you'll find the tea towels, the candles, the pack of seven books or the books one at a time, the cards, all the cards and the postcards and the badges, either one at a time or in the pack. And the last Homely House Kitchen Stories there's hardly any of these left. Once these are gone in this sale, that's it. They won't be there again. All of these products and the virtual products too, 20% slashed off at least. Plus the free shipping on all orders over £75 still uh, um, applies. So um, I just wanted to pop on here and remind you that that's what you can find if you go over to the shop. But now... It's time for the main feature. Hello, YouTube friends. Cast your mind back to May the 6th, 2019, if you can think that far back. May the 6th, 2019. What were you doing? All before the pandemic, all of that. What I was doing was posting a video that was part one and I said, I haven't finished this, but I'll get back to you in part two. Now, I'm deeply ashamed to admit that part two is now. <laughs> I definitely uh, just lost focus on that project. But I think it was finishing the um, indigo curtains that I did on that video about the day in my life, which I'll leave a link to up here somewhere, where I finished the blue indigo curtains that are hanging in my bedroom now. And, you know, every every day I go to bed every, and I just love seeing them up there. <laughs> this video then today <laughs> is going to be finally finishing the um, Liberty panel that I made that I call Pixel Pictures. This was as far as I got it. And I'm going to uh, I'll, at the very end of this video, I will leave um, a card an i-card on the end card there no no it's not called an i-card what's it called an end card i'll leave an end card to the video that this that so that you can go back and watch it so because i had an idea that i would finish this today i've just watched that video uh that i'm leaving a link to <coughs> almost all of it is me placing the pixel pieces you'll see why i call them uh, pixel uh, uh, pixels pixel pictures if you watch that video uh, and most of the video is just me placing with some lovely music in the background and then teasing you by saying i was going to finish the thing the one and a half inch squares of liberty which is what these are is ironed onto fusible backing onto which I've drawn a grid on the wrong side. So this has got a sticky on one side, iron on sticky on one side, and uh, I've drawn the, the grid to help to guide me to put my squares on on the other side. Now, in fact, I actually like it just like this, but in order to finish it, <laughs> this is what we're going to do. These have obviously been stuck on here quite securely for all that time. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to line up the camera differently so that you can see what I do with this next. Sorry, it's taken me so long. I wonder what other unfinished things I've got. <laughs> I'm sure you'll tell me. Is that a good view for you to see what I'm about to do? There's the grid on the back. And here's the fabrics on the front. Now what I'm going to do is fold over the 
see if you can see. I'm going to fold over the first set of squares here and then sewing pretty near the edge of the... So visualise what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm just catching... It folds beautifully because it's quite stiff. And I'm just catching the edge of those first fabrics there so that it's enclosed. I'll, I'll do a few and then I'll show you. I've just done a stitch line with it folded in like that and I'm going to do that with every single junction so the next one I'm going to fold the next one over it's really easy on this interfacing because it, it you don't have to you know measure or worry because it just folds exactly where it's supposed to it's not a quarter inch seam this just kind of visualizing where I know the end of the piece will be. This first set of runs is easy but when we come to do the other side the cross pieces it does get a little bit harder but this machine's equal to it. Great, this machine. So this is the last one on this direction. see how much it's shrunk because it used to be square and now it really isn't. So what I'm going to do with that now is I'm going to go and press that really really carefully so that I get it as flat as I possibly can and then I'm going to come back in and sew it in the other direction. So let's go and do that shall we? Okay so you need a nice hot iron, not so hot that it melts your fusible bonding stuff but hot enough so that it gives it a really nice crisp edge. And I'm pulling it and doing it from this side because doing it from the other side, it would actually start to crinkle up the, the bonding, the bondable webbing thing. Okay, so I'm just going to press this and you can see how much you can see how much fabric you lose by how not square that is now. So we're going to go back to the sewing machine now and we're going to sew this edge down now along here. It's a little bit trickier because we've got all these ones to bump over, but my machine will do that perfectly. So back at the machine, you know exactly what I'm going to do now. I'm going to fold this first edge in here now and do the same 
sewing stitch along here. Just the same. Fold it over. It's a little stiffer because of the folds in the first run, but it's perfectly possible to, to do this. That's the last one. Back to the ironing board now. There's several things you could do with this now. In the past, what I've done, because I have actually made these and finished them before, I've done a few different things. You can stick it in a frame, put it on the wall. That looks awesome because it's just showcasing all this beautiful Liberty fabric. You can put a zip in there and put another piece of fabric on the back and make it into a cushion. But all the while I've been sewing this and showing it to you, and holding it up to the window. It's just occurred to me that this would make another fabulous window panel in my house. Now, all the seams are enclosed except for on the edges. And what I could do now is turn this edge over and give it a machine stitch, but there's no machine stitching on the front and I don't think that would look that great. So I'm gonna have a try at folding this in just the tiniest amount and ironing it down so that these squares are the same size as the other squares. I'll, I'll iron it down and what will I do? I think I'll just hand stitch it actually. I'll just catch this to these, to these um, cross pieces so that there's no stitching at all on the front. And then I'm going to find a window. Oh, it's so pretty. It's just too wide to be a window there. So while I've got the iron plugged in, I'm going to do that. I'm going to just press these edges down so that we get the stained glass look on the edges as well, because you do need an, a double row of, a double li line of fabric, don't you? And then I'm just going to find somewhere to hang it like that. No backing on it, uh, apart from the, um, the Bonder web stuff. Why has it taken me so long to finish that? I apologise and I thank all of you for being really patient, but we're going to call this one part two and a finish when I do that um, edge that I want to do. As I say, I've made cushions in the past and I've framing it would mean you would lose the light. And I like, I like the light. We'll see how I get on with that idea. So when I found this, I've searched for it all morning. I knew I'd seen it somewhere when I was um, when I was looking for the when I found the blue this box that had all the indigo in, uh, and I found this, and then I couldn't find it again. So I've been. I've been looking for, I've got quite a lot of things in this house that are not finished or that are finished and I've forgotten about. Because while I was looking for this to finish it, 
I'll just before I carry on, I'll just tell you all I'm doing is with this bit of blue thread. Look, and I'm finishing up this blue thread as well, finishing up everything today. I'm just catching the corner, the edge that I've just pressed down, not fold it over. It doesn't need to be neatened. And I'm just catching it onto the bar that I've just sewn there. And then I'll just go along and do the next one. But when I was um, looking for this again this morning, um, I found this as well. which was a pink one that I finished. And then that made me remember that when I made the pink one, I'd also made a blue one as well and made it into a cushion. So this one is a cushion. So this one's a finished cushion. So this is quite simple. I'm just sliding along to the next bar. Let's see if I can show you. So I'm just sliding the needle along to the next bar like that whichever side it is, through that. It's quite stiff because there's lots of layers. And then I'm just going to do a, a tacking stitch, really. That's all it is. It's only to hold it down in place. It's going to look OK on the other side, I think. Yeah. OK, so then through there like that. And then up through into the folded over edge twice. Like a tech. This is not like a technique. I just made that up. But this is one of my winging it projects. But there's another unfinished thing, but a finished thing. So I realise I've been using this cushion on the sofa for a long time. Well, since um, since the 6th of May 2019. They do make nice cushions. I'll stick it up there. It's a nice cushion. So a pink cushion. Still not done. And what possibly might be a stained glass wall hanging Liberty thing to go along with all the other squares that I've got in my house. <laughs> this, okay, quite a lot, of, a lot of times people ask me about these curtains, which is a similar kind of thing, isn't it? I really do like little squares, don't I? Now, the curtains then are a postage stamp block and um, People ask me about them so often that I thought, I've, I'm sure I've got a video about that, and I have. And I thought, well, maybe it's not very good. I'll go back and have a look at it and see if uh, I need to remake it. But actually, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, in the video, uh, and I'll leave a link to that at the end of this, um, on the end card. That's where I'm leaving video links for you. I'm making lavender bags in it to sell in my shop and they all sold. And so that was a couple of years ago as well. So there's none of those left. But in it, I describe to you how you make this block and how easy it is to make in quantity. I mean, this is quite a big quantity. <laughs> uh, once I realised I was going to, I think I mentioned this in the video, once I realised that I was going to do the whole, um, cur the whole room, that was a bit daunting. It took me weeks to do, months even. Um, and I made them in like a bit at a time out of scrap. I didn't buy any new fabric for these at all. And so there is a video about that as well. So maybe at the end of this, there'll be a, li a little playlist of, of uh, squares, squares quilt blocks. Because this isn't really a quilt block, is it? Yes, I'm liking how this is turning out. Yeah. It's got a nice neatened edge now that you're not going to be able to see, but it's uh, it's just making the squares the same size. So yeah, sewing little squares of fabric, fiddly, but enormous fun. So I'm just going to tip the camera around and show you another squares thing. And I've got a video about this as well. This is a roundup of all Kate's squares things. Finish it there, look. And this is another sort of stained glass looking thing, which is made with um, some beautiful uh, Indian printed fabric. Now I've got a, a, a video where I make those as well. Look. So we go from having a stained glass window in the last homely house to a stained glass panel of um, fabric 
to my also my uh, curtains upstairs which are the indigo curtains sensing a bit of a theme I definitely am this might uh, where will this go because I've just when I finished ironing it I had a little look round there really isn't anywhere for this to go um, I guess it could go on the door now you see that's got a the door <laughs> has got another um, hanging that I make kind of assessing all these things that I make out of fabric um, on the door there's this thing which I've got in my shop as a virtual download so you could learn how to make those or figure it out by looking at it you know it's not hard none of these things are hard if they were hard I wouldn't do them I like I like um, the simplicity of putting fabrics together and so that the fabrics do the work you know I, I look at how these things will go together that's two sides done I've got two more to do and then let all the fabric do the talking because it is such sensational fabric so let's just have a round of what we've talked about we've got the a finish here which is always nice to see a finish there <laughs> we've got the um, door hanging which is um, has been made for a long time and I love it I like the uh, I like how wonky the squares are on that one we've got the pantaran hanging on the doors and they're on three or four doors around the house we've got the postage stamp block curtains which were an absolute labour of love. Probably nothing I would ever do again. And then this now. Now I'll tell you what else we've got while we're doing a roundup of all these things. In the tree house, uh, there's more um, postage stamp curtains in there. Maybe we'll have a look at that sometime soon. I suppose it's what I'm trying to do, and I think you'd, you'd have to say I was succeeding, is I'm trying to turn this house into very much a handmade house so that pretty much every bit of it is handmade. And uh, I'm doing okay at that, aren't I? It's always a good idea to have a few spare cushion pads and this is just such a small cushion 
This is a 12 inch cushion pad. I've got about five or six of these upstairs. When the mood takes me. Now I'm not very good at zips. I think I'd make a mess if I tried to put a zip in here. It's something I'd like to get better at. And I will. And maybe I'll come back and unpick this and put a zip in it one day. You never know. <laughs> but for now, the way that I finish this, just the way that I finish this one, I'm just going to do a slip stitch along the edge there. And then I'm going to put them together on a chair somewhere. I can't believe I've finished two things. So it's just a simple, I'd use a double thread so it's stronger and I just do a slip stitch along the edge there. It's cowardly of me. I should master zips, shouldn't I? <laughs> Thank you for being patient for part two or pop along and watch part one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. So did you enjoy that? I hope so. Are you going to pop across to the shop now and get yourself 20% off everything? <laughs>